With over 300 videos on our channel, it struck me that not a single one tackles the topic of creating filters. Perhaps it is because the scope seemed limited or maybe the existing ones just seem too basic. However, a unique filter concept on a particular website caught my attention recently, showcasing a creative approach that's anything but dull. Seeing this, I saw an excellent opportunity to introduce our first tutorial on filters. Naturally, I turned to GSAP and JavaScript, tools I am familiar with, to recreate this concept. In today's video, I am here to guide you through the process of building these animated filters using nothing but HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and of course, GSAP. If you find value in what I share, hitting the like button and subscribing to our channel would be greatly appreciated. Now let's dive straight into the code without wasting any more time. We'll begin with a container to house everything. First up, we need to set up our filters. We are incorporating 4 filters in total. Each filter will contain a paragraph to display the number of items that fall under it and an H1 to name the filter category. By default, the all filter will be set to active, ensuring that when the page first loads, it displays all the items. Each filter will also carry a data attribute, a crucial detail that allows us to filter and display items based on the selected category. We are going to tag each item in our collection with a corresponding data attribute. This way, we can easily match items to their filters, ensuring that only the relevant items are shown, except when the all filter is selected, which will display everything. For the display area, we are arranging the items into two columns and that sets the stage. Now on to the styling part. We'll begin our setup by ensuring all elements are stripped of margins and paddings and applying box sizing to border box. For the body, we are specifying a width and height of 100% and setting our default font family. Images are set to fully occupy their parents' dimensions with object fit cover to preserve their aspect ratios. The filter section will be fixed to the right of the viewport, stretching down with padding, especially at the bottom to nudge our filter content upward. We'll use Flexbox to align this content perfectly at the bottom right. Each filter item will have width and height based on the content inside it, will have some padding. We will again use Flexbox to make sure the content is pushed toward right. The paragraph elements displaying item counts are positioned relative to their headers to offset it from bottom based on the text size. The filter titles which are the h1 tags will later be broken down into span elements using javascript. These span elements will contain individual letters. They need specific styling including size and weight and a color transition when active to indicate the active selection. On to the items container, this will take up the left 60% of the screen, arranged to display our items in two columns using flexbox. Each column is equally divided using flex set to 1 with some padding for some spacing and the second column is slightly offset downwards for a dynamic layout. Each item gets its padding with a generous amount at the bottom. The item image class ensures a consistent height for images, while text elements receive some common styling as usual. With our CSS foundation in place, we are all set to bring this design to life with JavaScript. Before we get into the coding part, let's talk about how I have set up our data. I have created an array of objects, as I typically do, to organize our content. This will help us in keeping our HTML neat and tidy. Within this array, each item has tags associated with it. We'll use these tags to determine which items to display based on the active filter selected. Alright, with that covered, let's move on. We'll begin by grabbing all the necessary elements and containers. Additionally, we'll define the font sizes for the filters, adjusting them according to their state, active or inactive. Then, I'll introduce our standard tag splitting utility function. This function is essential for breaking down H1 tags into individual span elements. The purpose here is to enable us to animate each letter separately, allowing for a stagger effect. Let's break down the code into simple steps. 
first up, we'll create a function called animate font size. This one's job is to take any target element and adjust the font size of its child span elements. It uses this app for a smooth animation, applying a stagger to each span for the extra flat. Next, we have the clear items function. As the name suggests, it clears out all the items from our columns. We loop through each column and set its inner HTML to an empty string, readying it for the new content. Now, we want to add items to the items container based on the filter selected. So we will create the add items to calls function. It checks if we are filtering all or a specific tag, then loops through the filtered items. The includes method checks whether the filter that is selected matches with the tag of an item or not. Then for each item, it creates a new element, sets its content and places it in the appropriate column. This way, we'll keep our display updated with the right items. Now we need a function to animate the items when a new filter is selected. So let's create a function called animate items. This function fades out the items container, clears and updates the items according to the selected filter and then fades in everything back in. It's a neat way to refresh the displayed items with a bit of visual flair. We'll also split the filter headers into span elements when the page loads, just so we can later animate them with a stagger. Also, when the page loads, based on our HTML, we have set the active class on the first filter, which is all. So we need to make sure it gets the higher font size as it is the active element. For that, we will pass the first filter through the animate font size function we have created above. We'll also run add items to call function to show all the items when the page loads first. And finally, we are setting up our filters. Each filter listens for clicks, updating the active state, adjusting font sizes for the active or inactive filters, and triggering the item animations based on the selected filter. So in a nutshell, this code manages our filtering system, animates transitions, and keeps the display dynamically updated. When a new filter is clicked, we first set the existing active filter's font size to default. We'll also make sure the rest of the filters don't have the active class but the current clicked one. Next, we animate the new filter's font size using the same animate font size function again. And finally, we update the items by grabbing the data attribute from filter which was clicked and passing it to the animate items function to display the new items. And that's it. Hope you find the video helpful. See you in the next one.